Hey everybody, Brad with Full Spectrum Survival. So I want to talk to you about an important topic today. Something that definitely doesn't get talked about enough in our genre and in the community as a whole. How are you going to deal with liars and lying when the shit hits the fan? Now this topic is a little bit mature, so anybody watching with family, you might want to skip this one and go on to another one. I have some personal experience here. How will you deal with somebody who lies to you to get your goods or to get you to protect them, or to get you to give them shelter, or to use you in one way or another when the shit hits the fan. Undoubtedly, the shit is gonna hit the fan. Might not be this weekend, might not be this year, might not be for five years, but this empire is going to fall. It is going to happen. The entire Western empire, not just America, not just Europe, the entire Western Empire is going to fall. And when that happens, there will be people who will use you and abuse you to get what they want. Like I said, I have some recent experience here with people who will lie and who will deceive others just to try and get what they want. How will you know what they're trying to do? How will you stay away from them? What will you be able to do? Well, one of the first things that will tell you that someone's lying to you is everybody else is a bad person. They're gonna to try to scare you into thinking that everybody except them is a terrible person. Everybody except that person is going to hurt you. And that's their way of grooming you. That's their way of manipulating you into thinking that you need to rely on them rather than thinking about anyone else in your community. So that's number one. Number two, the fruits of their labor. If someone is lying to you and comes to you for help, comes to you for shelter, for aid, to protect them if they think the shit is about to hit the fan or if it already has, they will not be able to give you a fruit of their labor. All they will have is what's on their back. They won't have any skills. They won't have the ability to aid or protect your group. They will want only to mooch from you, only to leech from you, and to take from you, and take, and take, and take. So what will you do? Well, if you're like me, the first thing that you're gonna do is cut ties completely. You're gonna say, this is over. You are not taking from me. Now, I understand that if the shit has hit the fan, you might have to make a snap judgment. You might have to look at a particular scenario and say, do I let this person into my group, or do I throw them out on the street? And then you're gonna to have to weigh each one of those consequences. What happens if you do let them into your group? Do they bring a danger with them? Are they an unstable person mentally? Are they going to gain and, and grow this hatred for you because you begin to see their lies? If so, you better be ready to protect your family. You better be ready to protect your group using all means possible because that person, that liar, that deceitful person will do nothing except think about themselves. Okay, what about the other side of the story? What if you have time to not just make a snap judgment? What if you have time to sort of, like we do now, like in our current times of peace, where we have community building, what do you look for? Still those same two rules stay in place. Number one, they're gonna to try to make you think that everybody else is the enemy. Number two is the fruit of their labor. Now there are some other things. They're gonna to lie to you about everything. They're gonna to lie to you about how much goods they have, how much weapons they have, whether they have medicine. They're gonna pick skills that you might not be able to readily test, especially if that skill is not within your wheelhouse. So imagine for a moment that someone comes to you and says, I am a green thumb. I can grow anything. You give me a pile of cow dung and I'm going to grow you more food than you could use for your entire group. Of course, you got to look at their claims and you have to say, well, that seems a little bit ridiculous. But maybe you, maybe they have just enough information, just enough that it feeds you and says, okay, well, this might be good for my group. Now is when you're going to have to put them to the test. Similarly, what if they come to you and say, I have medical skills. I was an EMT. Uh, you know, they might have this long, drawn-out backstory. Because remember, a liar is a liar. And they're going to lie from start to finish. 
Now, in our current times of peace, you're going to have time to see these lies. The veil, the, un- the layers of this, the layers of their lies will begin to unravel. And you'll start to see these things. One of the best ways to do that is to start long-term communications. Start discussing things over and over again. If you're intelligent, and I know that you are, you'll ask something, wait a couple of weeks, and then ask it again. See if that story matches up. In these cases that I've talked to you about, these people who try to use me and my family, who tried to use my group, their stories could not match up. They would say one thing at the beginning of the month and then another thing at the end of the month. And it would never align. So start to punch holes in their lies. You don't have to do it in a way that's hateful. You don't have to do it in a way that's harmful to them. But punch holes in their lies. Ask a question at the beginning of the month about a particular skill set. Ask it again at the end of the month. See what happens. If they've told you stories because people who lie, people who are deceitful, like I said, they are always deceitful. They will over-embellish their stories. They'll tell you so much information, just an overload of information, and I know you guys know the types. The type of person who just can't stop talking about something. And especially if they get caught in one of those little white lies, then they have to keep on going and they have to sort of rebuild their own justification. And they'll just keep going far beyond the means of any rational person. Whereas if you just made a mistake, you or I would go, I'm sorry, I I was wrong. This person won't. This type of person will continue to lie and they'll continue to to try and wrap up this lie in another set of lies. But that's an opportunity for you. That will allow you and your group, you and your family, to punch holes in their lies. Number one, make sure you are always on top of the most advantageous position that you can be. Be at the top of the list. Have the most skills. Have the most firepower. Have the most intelligence so that you can poke holes in all of their lies. So that you can start to unravel those lies for yourself. Be in a good position. And that way, when you have to let it go, when you have to cut those ties, when you have to sever yourself from that disgusting relationship, you can do so relatively peacefully because that person knows that you have the advantage. They know that you have the weapons. They know that you have the skills. They know that you have the operational security. That if something goes bump in the night, you are prepared. That you won't be caught off guard. So always keep this dog on a leash. Now, who do you suspect of being a dog? Who do you have to treat like this potentially rabid animal? Every single person. Every person. Because everybody, when the shit hits the fan, they're going to come after your goods. They might do it with the right heart. And they might know, gee, Brad has this skill set. Mary, Joe, Mary has this, uh, you know, the food stores. Joe can really build a, build a structure. They might come to you with the right heart, but still they're coming after your skills. They're coming after your goods. They want to take that from you. If it's a mutually beneficial relationship, it's perfect. You have something, they have something, either it's skills or goods or just a will to survive, that is absolutely okay. That's okay that they want to take from you and you want to take from them. It's mutually beneficial. It's not harmful. But there are those other people, the ones that we're talking about in this video, that want to come take from you. They just want your goods. They just want your protection. And they're going to try and get you to guarantee them those goods, to guarantee them that protection. They're gonna do so by using lies and deceit. So you have to be prepared to be at the most advantageous position, to punch holes in their stories, and then to cut it. As soon as you realize that you are being lied to, as soon as you realize that you've been fed a line of complete BS, you cut ties. You say, I'm done. In our current times of peace, you'll do that in a respectful manner. 
You'll do it without even considering the altercation becoming anything more than respectful. And you'll say, I'm done. I'm sorry. It didn't work out. And that's it. But you have to expect that this liar is going to go on, and it might be a group of liars. It could be a whole family of liars. They're going to go on to other people, and you're going to become one of those enemies that they tried to tell you everybody else was. And they'll have just enough information about you that they can spin this web of deceit about you. So be prepared that especially in our current time of peace, as soon as you sever ties with this deceitful lying group, they're going to move on to another group and start to spin this web of lies about you. Be prepared, it's going to happen. But again, be in the most advantageous position so that when it happens, it doesn't matter. I have some recent personal experience with this. I've had somewhat experience in the past. Does that change how I'll look at other people when they come for help? Absolutely not. Everybody has a clean, state, a clean slate unless the fruits of their labor show otherwise. You have to know that as soon as this person, as soon as you cross that line and you sever ties, do not deal with that person again. Only if you become the least, in the least advantage, only if you need that person should you ever deal with them again. Let me give you an example. Say SHTF happened. Might even be minor. Maybe Charlottesville got a lot worse. Maybe in another world that continued down the rabbit hole. And so you had these pockets of chaos. Well, if you or your family needed medicine or if you needed help and that liar, that deceitful person had that medicine or had that help, you would, of course, have to deal with them. How would you do it? A lot of people, I'm sure, in the comments, they're going to say, I would do it by force, and I know they've had it, and I'm just going to go take it. I personally don't think that's necessarily the right position. Is there a time and a place for that in a grid-down situation? Possibly. But you can still be the smartest. Even if you need that person, you can still be the smartest. And you can bring to the table more of what you have, whether that's labor or a certain skill set or goods of another nature, and you can give 125% and only expect 100 back. And let them know that this is the rule. I'm going to give you more than what you would normally get in return for just this, because I need it. And then handle things from there. Let them know that you're still smarter than they are. And you know you're being screwed. You know you're actually screwing yourself to some degree because you need something of theirs. That's okay. Like I said, when this happens, whether it's in the time of peace that we're in right now or if the grid goes down, people will have to rely on each other. Sometimes it'll be mutually beneficial. I have made plenty of friends in this area that we have a mutually beneficial relationship. They can call on me for help. I can call on them for help. Come at a moment's notice. They get on the radio and say, Brad, someone's here. I'm going to be there in minutes during a situation in which the grid is down, the rule of law is non-existent or at best uh, invisible for the moment. You're going to have to make those decisions. Who will you help? Who do you have these mutually beneficial relationships with? And do you make sure that you're always giving back when they give? That's an important part. Because of the nature of friendship, because of the nature of a group, of a community, it can't be one way. The liar and the deceitful make it one way. And they're, give me, give me, give me. And they make promises. You can do this, I'll do this. But those promises never come to fruit. So make sure that when you have a truly mutual a mutually beneficial relationship, that you give back. Somebody helps you, somebody comes to your aid, you better come to their aid right away. Even when you don't feel good, even when you hurt, even when you might have 10 other things that are pressing that you have to do, come to their aid right away. Because the next time that you need them, you'll want them to come to your aid right away. This could be for anything. 
It could be that uh, a storm's coming, winter is coming, and your windows got broken in by looters, and you don't have the wherewithal or the physical ability to reshelter your home. So you'll need to call on somebody because that night could be the night that someone perishes from hypothermia. So you'll want them to come to your aid immediately. So be ready to drop everything that's of course not life-threatening and go to their aid. Make sure that a mutually beneficial relationship stays mutually beneficial. Now, of course, after the maturing of a relationship, five years down the road, even on the recovery phase of a long duration emergency, you'll be able to have this, uh, this flowing relationship where you might not have to pay that debt back right away, or you might not expect them to pay that debt back right away to you. And that's okay, but that will, that will mature organically. And you can't just go into it thinking that that's what's going to happen. Be ready to pay them back with your skills or with your abilities, or even just with your time. There's a lot of people out there, especially in our community, that want that community. And they want nothing more in return except for your time. Be prepared to give that to them, even when you don't want to. Talk to them. Learn from them. Everybody, even the liars and the deceitful, have something, have glimmers, glimpses, more likely glimmers, <laughs> glimpses of information that you can learn from. And you'll be able to put this into your bucket of knowledge and through talking to other people, you'll be able to see, did their information match up? And so it will help you ga gather more information. It'll help you gather uh, another skill set. So know that everybody out there, even the liars, even the deceitful, have something to teach you. In some cases, it's just to teach you never to deal with them again. Now you look around our community, and I'm sure that you can see who the liars and who the deceitful are. They generally don't have many friends within the community. Because we're here, we're, we're here. I have people email me 15 page emails and I give them a return for what they do for me and I give them time in return. And I read through those and I reply to each and every one. Because that's what they want, that's what our community wants. We drive on friendship. So please, Watch out for the liars. Watch out for the deceitful. Be prepared to sever ties immediately. They are there. They are in our community right now. Do what it takes to be in the most advantageous position and to keep you and your family safe. As always, from Kelly and I to you and yours, stay safe, remain prepared, and keep watch.